<laughs> no, no, no. It's rush, 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 it's go, 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 and I mean, you squeal into the parking lot at work, spray gravel, caffeine in hand. <laughs> the caffeine goes down, you become a productivity machine. I mean, yes, emails done, to news, check, 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 call, 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 until about 9.15. <laughs> At 9.15, you start doing what I call the booty dance. You're doing this like, uh, uh. You're getting a little bored, a little antsy, maybe a little hungry. And if you work in an office, you do what I call cubicle trick-or-treating. <laughs> you come back from lunch, you sit down at your workstation, and that's when you're totally motivated, psyched, optimistic. I mean, just, right? You're like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> okay, but you can't stop, you don't. Whatever stress is necessary, you have to take it on. You use all your energy. You just push yourself through that barrier. And you can and you do. And you're like, oh, okay, all right, I'm back, I'm back. Oh, one o'clock, two o'clock, 2.30, you start doing that booty dance again. You know, 2.45, you start noticing your neck stiff. 2.55, you start thinking, man, I am so tired. <laughs> What is wrong with me? And then at 3 p.m., up comes the wall. Pow! 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, whatever time Elvis leaves the building, you start making your work to life transition. And in this state, in this moment, you walk to your car, you get in your car. And then your transition, you start thinking about the people in your life, your loved ones, and you start thinking about your significant other. And you start thinking about, you know what? They do a lot for me. Stay with me. <laughs> I love them. When I get home, I'm going to tell them how I feel. So you pull up to your home with love in your heart. <laughs> Stay with me. <laughs> You're going to tell them how you feel. You go, you open the door, and right there is dog poop. <laughs> Honey, the dog is pooped on the floor. Me? Ha, I didn't even want the dog. You wanted the dog. Kids, turn off the television. Will someone please clean this up? I mean, how can you go from love in your heart to snap just like that? See, that's your physiology driving your psychology. That's your state driving your decisions. That's not the real you in that moment. Yeah, we can fix that. A lot of experts say, Seriously, people, why don't you choose that watercress nut salad instead of the ch Chicago style deep pan pizza? Because they're talking about making choices in a vacuum. All these decisions throughout your day and the days previous have built this behavioral momentum that is driving you a certain direction. Now, is that good news or bad? It's great news because you can change those patterns, you can change that momentum, and you can drive yourself the other direction. So I called up Dr. Peter Hobrell from the U.S. Olympic Training Center. He's a sports psychologist. His job is to take the raw athletes, the young new recruits, and turn them into gold medal contenders. Take raw motivation, turn it into long-standing, optimal results. So I said, okay, Dr. Hobrell, tell me what you do with those people. He says, we only do really one thing. We switch their focus, Andy, from outcome to execution. And I thought, whoa. Okay, what do you mean? He says, do you remember back when Michael Jordan was still playing basketball, professional basketball for the Chicago Bulls? I said, of course, hero of mine. He said, in one particular game, finals, his team was down by two points in the last 20 seconds of the game. The announcers were saying this thing is over because all the other team had to do was throw the ball in, make one or two passes, it's gone, it's over, right? Okay. He said, Andy, what do you think Michael Jordan was thinking right before they threw the ball in? Steal the ball, win the game. He said, that's right. That's what he was thinking right before they threw the ball in. But that is outcome. And what do you think the desired outcome is for an Olympic athlete that comes into our facility? Gold medal. They want to win gold. Okay. He says, and we let them think that until they get here. But once they get here, they can no longer think about, talk about gold medals. That's outcome. We want them focused on execution. He said, when Michael Jordan, when they threw the ball in, Michael Jordan made his break. 
he knew that if he reached, if he executed the reach with his inside hand, it shortened his reach by two to three inches. So he executes a perfect outside hand reach. Gets a fingertip on the ball. The player is right there. He knows that if he stops, goes around, the player's gonna be right on his heels. He's gonna lose his advantage. So Michael Jordan knows how to execute that. He sees it, he tips it, spin move, boom! Now, he's got the ball. Now, I want you to put yourself in his shoes. You have the ball. You are running down the court as fast as you can. You hear a herd of elephants behind you, which is the other team. Behind the goal are thousands of people who hate you with wavy things doing like this, <laughs> right? And the clock is going three, two, and right there is the three-point line. As you dribble to the three-point line, you have one second. What are you thinking? Please make this shot. <laughs> Right, please, 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 you know, prayers, whatever, okay. Just so you know, that's not what Michael Jordan is thinking. Michael Jordan is thinking execution. He went execution, execution, grab it, execution. Where's my spot? Right there. He goes, he knows instinctively what's the best process to make a three-point shot, a three-step drop. One, two. He knows to release the ball before, right before he gets to the height of his leap. He knows to keep his eyes two inches above the rim until the ball goes in. Oh, I mean, the whole place went nuts, right? Michael Jordan made it. Uh, game's over, okay? And he said, Dr. Harple said, Andy, now in that situation, you see that it was all about execution. If you were thinking about making the shot, what does that do to your chances? What does that do to your stress and pressure, the stress level of stress and pressure? All right, if you're thinking about whether you make the shot or not, what does that do to your chances of actually making the shot? It's way down, right? Okay, so Michael Jordan, in that situation, Dr. Hobble said, Andy, it's all about execution. If you can take, if you can communicate to your people that the biggest mistake that they're making, that's sabotaging their long-term results, is that they're always focused on the outcome and whether they get it or they don't, right? That is killing their motivation. I said, okay, that's cool. And he said, but Andy, here's the really cool part. He goes, that happened exactly that way with Michael Jordan, except for one thing. Steal, spin move, gets the ball, dribbles down, da 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 But while the ball was still going up, he turns around and goes, Now, my thought was, if he missed that shot, what kind of a jerk would he look like? Right, but Dr. Harville said, Andy, why did he do that? It's because he had executed that move over and over and over. It's a skill. It's not about his self-worth, it's a skill. And he learned that skill and he practiced that skill and it's all about the execution, it's all about the skill. And so as soon as it left his fingertips, he knew it was going in. There is no pressure on that situation. See, that's a cool thing. So, but he goes, but the really awesome part, Andy, is what happens in the minds of the athletes that get this execution focus. He said, what really happens, Andy, is all of a sudden they come in and, and the workout, the work required to get their goal is work. They want the glory, right? He goes, but once we get this execution mindset really deeply ingrained in their day-to-day -day behaviors, their new SOP, he goes, what happens, Andy, is all of a sudden they start to like the work. Now to me, isn't that the motivational nirvana that we all want? To like the work required to get to the goals that we want? That is to me, that's like the most, if you get one thing from me tonight, think about it. Think execution. It will dramatically increase your chances of success. And you know, that's what my goal is for you today. Is to open your mind to the possibility that life balance and better health is the, are the foundations to improving every aspect of your life, of your business, your relationships, your ability to, to be great and to be able to connect and to be, just to have a great life.